maybe 30 years ago that that, that happened. So yeah, I think that's uh, you know you 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 just you look for open doors. I, I think anytime as as a Christian, anytime someone asks me almost any question, it, it's it's a door that opens. How do I how do I take that question then and I'm sorry, but use that question to twist back into something that'll provide me an opportunity to talk to them about the Lord. Right, which is the most important. Like that's our that's our the greatest thing we can share is yes. uh, Jesus with the world. You know. Yes, sir. Well, uh, what do you have for um? You know, we have a couple things here. So there's uh, prayer is one. Um, you know, people are talking about questions, uh, and then also be present in people's lives. So making sure that you're Doing things, especially those of you that work or do something where you encounter a lot of people in the public, you know, uh, or your, your people you work with, you're always around people there. Uh, whether you want to be or not, you're working, and uh, there's a great opportunity for, because uh, you get a cons- constant flow, and they use people recognize you, and, and you build, uh, or, or for me, like if I go shopping at the store, and I see the same person over and over again, so mm-hmm. things like that are very useful, so just be praying that <laughs> you can do that. So what's... Uh, Let's hear the end of that story. I'll, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> so um, dad asked him, you know, would you, any reason you wouldn't study the Bible with us? We found people like to study the Bible. And the guy said, uh, he looked at him a long time and I thought this is not going to be well. He said, uh, you know, when I was a little boy, my mama used to read me the Bible. She's been gone a long time. I'll take your Bible correspondence course. And so he signed up for the Bible correspondence course, studied all the lessons, completed them all. And then, uh, asked dad, dad showed him a series of videos, old Joel Miller videos, film strips in those days. And then after the film strips, dad asked him, if any reason I shouldn't baptize you into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And he was ready to be baptized. He was baptized. And uh, he came to church the next Wednesday night and he looked rough. I mean, he had a nasty looking greasy t-shirt on. And you know, this is a long time ago, blue jeans when blue jeans weren't really acceptable in those days, you know, his hair was long. He just looked rough. And I, I think he scared most of us, you know, <laughs> and he, he came in the back door after the service began, came in a couple minutes late and he kept coming. He come Sunday, every Sunday, Sunday nights, Wednesday, it was every service. And it seemed that he kept cleaning up more and more, cutting his hair more and more. Eventually he had a burr cut, you know, he, and he, he'd keep moving closer to the front. And eventually uh, he was almost on the very front row. And I remember the Wednesday night, I was sitting with a guy named Keith and a guy named Jeff and a guy named Timmy. The three of us were sitting on the front row. I remember sitting on the front row that Wednesday night. And uh, I know where I was sitting because mom and dad had a rule. You can sit anywhere in the church, but you want to, as long as it's in front of us. And they sat on the second row. So that's why I was on the front row. But I remember that, that, that Wednesday night that he didn't come. I mean, it was it was as conspicuous that he wasn't there as it was the first time he had been there because he never missed. And the service started and brother Jonathan was up leading singing and about halfway through the second song, the back door opened and he walked in and behind him was walking a guy that looked just like he did the first time he walked in the building. And I don't know, there are about nine or 10 of those motorcycle guys that eventually came to Christ uh, simply because of, you know, being willing to study the Bible with someone. So that's the end of that story. That's a great story, man. And, and, and to have the courage to, some people, you know, you just knock and you leave. And he was gone. He looked in the back and he was, he didn't want to just take that as a, you know, didn't pass that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of relentless like that. He, church he preached at for years in Birmingham, Alabama had, uh, they would baptize about one person every seven days for about 40 years. And they, wow. they really were very evangelistic. So, yeah. That's awesome. Well, so do you have a, another story? Another? I, got, I did bring another one, just in case you ask. So, uh, <clears throat> I was in fifth grade when I met Lynn. Lynn was this great young guy. We were good friends. We had a lot of the same interests. We had really close friends, and for years I knew that Lynn was not a Christian. I needed to talk to him about about the Lord, and and just I, I would put it off and put it off, and so you know, I kept trying to hint at ways to talk to him, and we. We finally talked, we studied a little bit and nothing came of it. And every once in a while I'd ask him about it, you know, and, and ask him about Christ, about the gospel, about the church. And he, he would always kind of say, well, you know, I'm young and I'm still learning. And he didn't say much. So on our senior trip, the last night of our senior trip, we were in Lebanon. Uh, we were just outside of Lebanon, Tennessee. That's not where most people take their senior trips these days, but that's where, that's where we went, went to the Nashville area and uh from Birmingham 
And I remember the last night, it was about one in the morning in a, in a hotel room and somebody knocked on my door and it was Lynn. And he said, I, I, could you baptize me? I'm, I'm ready to become a Christian. And I baptized Lynn that night. And um, his dad called me the next day and said, if I ever see you speaking my son, I'll shoot you. Oh. Uh, he, we graduated and I didn't see Lynn for probably 35 years. And about four or five years ago, we reconnected and he has grown in his faith and he's continued to love the Lord and just a good man. But we for years had not, had not seen each other. So that's another little story there. That's a good one. Good one. Well, thanks so much for uh, sharing these great stories and strategies. I'm glad you're well, on the you. show. Yes, sir. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for what you're doing. Well, yeah. And, and uh, so we'll encourage you all uh, who are listening uh, that uh, don't give up. Get out there, share share about the, the good news because uh, the good news is all life's about. Like the people out there, they need to hear good news. They need to hear about Jesus because they are they're looking for a, a way of reason to live. So um, we have that. We just got to be brave. Yes, <laughs> sir. Be brave. I, I, I keep a three by five card in my pocket most of the time. I, I don't have it in this shirt pocket today with three names on it of people I'm praying about that are not Christians yet that I want to come to Christ. And, you know, then I, that card reminds me to look for open doors. And so just, you know, just keep trying and finding the courage to, as you say, to be brave in this. Well, I like that. So if you're listening, that's a good little strategy there. If you want to try that this week, too, is just get a little card, write a couple names on there. Keep that in your pocket. When you pull it out, you know, pray for them. That's a good strategy. We have time for one more quick story. Sure. Let's do it. Bonus. Okay. I've done that for years, the little card in the pocket. And so one Sunday years ago, I was preaching. I gave everybody in the audience a card and had them write down three names. I have a son that was, eight, that was in eighth grade at the time. His junior year of high school, he called me one day after class. He said, Dad, can you meet me at the church building? Denny, my friend, wants to be baptized. And then I heard him. He got real quiet. And after a while, I could tell he was, he was weeping. He said, uh, he's my third name on my card. Uh. And thought, you know, it took three years, but you know, it's just, you know, those, those look for those opportunities, those people you're praying for. So that's the third story. That's awesome. I love that. Then we can leave, we can leave the show with that, which is what won't we cry with joy when, uh, when someone we know or someone we've written down in our card, um, becomes a Christian. That's awesome. I said, so get more opportunities like that. God bless you all. You've been listening to be brave. The world right now is a crazy place, and sharing the love of God is the most important thing we can do right now. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review, and we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit up GoBeBrave.org. Remember, the love of God is the most powerful force in the universe. Learn how to love like Jesus. See you next time.